Hi there, Kawa here. So for this episode of Crash Course, we're going to talk about spending, be it uh, ingots or coupons. So before we even start talking about spending, we're first going to have to give you a disclaimer about you know the fact that everyone's situation is different, and I don't know you know your personal situation, so I can only give everyone general advice and then you're going to have to judge for yourself where you fall onto the spectrum and uh, you know figure out what exactly needs to be done for your scenario so on the topic of um, spending we're first gonna touch in on two smaller topics first uh, because they link into spending the smaller topics are uh, power plateau and establishing baselines. Uh, we need to talk about these because, you know, to spend wisely, you first have to understand what you're spending on. And uh, these two are very interlinked with your spending. Uh, we're going to first talk about uh, establishing a baseline. So when I say establish a baseline, I mean that you need to have a generalized number or level for your team as a whole before you start committing to stacking your move one. It's very important. So I personally selected level seven. I wanted everything to be level seven before I went on this long effort to uh, stack my move one. So um, this is my move one now. He is completely done. He has all his gear here. He has the level 12 rune stones and his refines and uh, charms are all maxed out. But prior to doing this, I made sure that everyone else had at least level seven refines and level seven charms. Also level seven uh, rune stones. Uh, this is to more or less establish a baseline so that you're not hyper focused on your move one. You're distributing some of the power before you start this mission. It makes it a the journey a little longer, but it makes it easier on you because you don't have just one like sh really strong guy and everyone else is like super weak. Though, uh, as everyone's situation is different, you could pick a different uh, baseline number. Uh, you don't have to follow what I did exactly. I decided seven mainly because uh, it was based on the refines back then. So, uh, as you know, Refines move on to advanced refines at level seven. So instead of wasting my time bumping up the uh, move one to level ten from seven while collecting, and then, you know working on other ones on the side, I decided instead that I wanted to bump everyone to level seven, so I didn't have to worry about uh, medium refines anymore. Back in the day, medium refines were harder to get. So what well, was it harder to get? It was just like. You know, I didn't want to go split my attention between medium refines and advanced refines. So I established a baseline at 7, everyone's at 7, I could focus all my attention on the advanced refines, which is why all my stuff is level 7. Uh, and it just so happened I did the same thing with my charms. Uh, you don't have to follow 7, like I said, you can also, you can always make it lower, you can make it like level 6. Uh, but I would not suggest you to go beyond level 7 with your refines because you obviously should be freezing them at level 7 as I said in other videos you freeze them at level 7 and you push them from level 7 to level 10 all in one go during one rebate or else you are losing out on about 300 advanced refines for no reason and we all know those are not cheap that's about I want to say at least 9k in ingots Maybe more. Actually, more than 9k in ingots. But yeah, so you're losing out on that. And you want to avoid that. Uh, but yeah, you can diverse the number on your uh, baseline. But you definitely have to establish one. So that's the first thing. You establish a baseline before you start worrying about uh, stacking your move one. After you establish that baseline, you can easily just start focusing on the move one because everyone else is not super weak. So I'm just gonna show it right here. You can see that my move one is almost 120k. This is my move two. He's at 83k. Uh, he's currently being focused because move one is done, so he's starting to move up the ranks. Move three here is uh, 68k, and move four is 60k. 
So, as you already can see, move 3 and 4 is not too far off from each other in BP. Uh, the difference is probably just the stars and probably the mood and some other small stuff. But everyone has a generally established baseline of 7. Um, seeing that I recently just finished the uh, move 1, I decided to bump everyone's baseline up to 8 instead of 7. So that it just makes the difference not as big as I keep moving forward. That's something I'm personally doing. You don't have to follow me on this, but you definitely should establish a baseline and, you know, maintain it. And so by doing it this way, you don't have, you know, super weak units getting killed by everybody. But yeah, so that's um, establishing a baseline. And then I'm now going to talk about uh, power plateauing. So power plateauing is more or less when diminishing returns kick in. Uh, that's when the amount of power you're gaining versus the amount you're investing into gaining this power is lower. So as we all know, in the beginning of the game, everything was really easy to gain. Um, BP. BP was very easy to gain because your systems were new, you didn't touch any of it yet, and just doing anything gave you like a thousand BP for no reason. So as you progress through the game, you level up your systems and they start costing more and more to the point where it's just so expensive you can't you know gain that bp easily anymore uh the best example i can give you is mount miyaboku it is very visible and you can see it so i'm at the end of map 14 here and it cost me 281 mount miyaboku gifts to move forward uh, I leveled this up uh, this morning. I moved from this spot here to this spot. So, let me just really quickly show you. Oh, these are my gains for today. I gained like very little. So, that's that's a point of power plateauing. Because once you get to a certain point, you don't gain much BP at all. You just slowly crawl your way up. Uh, this here, the 191, this is the BP I gained for leveling up the Mount Miyaboku spot one time. So it's under 200, but we're going to round it up to 200. And as I already told you, it takes 281 Mount Miyaboku Gifts to gain 200 BP. So with that math, you already can understand that each Mount Miyaboku Gift is worth less than 1 BP to me. And that's an example of power plateauing. I'm at that point where it's just so expensive that I'm not gaining anything out of it. Um, and you can see, like, if you know, you go further back, it's more or less, the numbers are going up, but the cost is going up so much. Like, you know, it was, at map 11, it was like, you know, you're gaining 20, 40, but at map 14, you're gaining, like, 50, 60, but the cost is, like, tripled. Um, so when you hit this one point, which is the power plateau, you have to evaluate on your own what system is still worth working on and which one is not. It's very visible when you just start crunching the numbers a little bit. So this is where it, you know, links up with spending. In this game, you're really not supposed to spend willy-nilly. You have to wait for rebates. It's a very patient game. You have to sit here and wait for the rebates. Um, as you know, today is well, not today, this week. This week we have Fukumaru uh, deals, and this is the prime event you should be waiting for, especially if you are a free to play player. And this is literally just free items on top of you spending for power. And this links up to the power plateauing and the establishing baselines because now you understand what you have to do. Uh, and where you need to focus yourself, especially when you're power plateauing. Um, also, when you start power plateauing, that is the point in the game where you have clearly established a foundation for your team. You have power backing you up now. This is where you get some leniency to not pick up BP all the time and actually pick up some uh, units. Or, well, not complete units, but more like frags. 
So the best way to ex uh, explain it is using this event, like the time limited ninja recruitment. So if I come into this shop here, the if we were not power plateauing, the first thing we would instantly go for is the battle armor. We know it gives around roughly a thousand BP. Uh, assuming you don't have it, obviously. So, at this point, you already can see that it's going to cost you 50 points to get this um, armor. But, is that 1000 BP really that big of a gain for you? Is that where you start questioning yourself? Or would you rather just start picking up units? Um, if you establish already a foundation, you can always ignore this option of this battle armor and instead maybe pick up a frag or two of this Minato, assuming you're doing this for free. Um, but regularly, I would tell you to pick up this battle armor. But, you know, once you start plateauing, you already have that foundation. You should start looking towards end game units to pick up to, so that you can use. Uh, but this is actually not that great of an example because there's also Gamma Riki here, <laughs> a really good summon that you should definitely have. Uh, but ignore this one for sure. Do not buy the deluxe spells. Um, I think I've seen people do it before. Do not do that, please. That is like a really bad idea. This is something that you could purchase from the grocery store. And it's definitely not worth no 128 points. That's two and a half um, Jonin Minato frags. Uh, I'd rather you get the frags and get these bells. So, um, yeah, so when spending wisely, uh, especially with coupons, you have to wait for Fukumaru and you have to spot deals. Don't blindly buy things just because, oh, this is worth power. I should definitely buy it. Um, you should be uh, looking for good deals like lucky board for example this is one of the best spots to pick up power especially when you're still uh, mid-tier in power level because once you get to a certain point the board doesn't have anything left to offer you everything here is just mediocre to you at some point like especially me i don't have anything here i want like nothing here gives me anything but um while this board still offers you stuff you should try to do it um, on the Fukumaru weeks. Uh, I know I'm bouncing around, but I want to go back to Fukumaru real quick because I know some people like to say, well, this Fukumaru week is bad. It's giving me not great ninjas. Like this one. We have, you know, two... Uh, they're not really joke units, but they're not, like, they're not top tier units. But you have to also understand that by not spending... Um, during a Fukumaru week, you have to wait another month for the next one. Granted, though, this one's a different scenario because they bumped this one up earlier, but ignoring that, Fukumaru usually shows up once a month. But you also have to ideally do the full thing, or else it's just not worth your time. Make sure you do the full thing. All 20k of it. Even if the unit is not that impressive, like... They usually don't put nothing impressive in here. There was just that one time they put something decent in here. But usually it's nothing super impressive. Uh, but the thing is, it gives you a lot of free power stuff. It gives you, like like right here, there's 20 Miyaboku Grass, 10 Bells, uh, what is this? Uh, 4 Charm Packs, another 20 Miyaboku Training, some 20 Bells, um, and another 8 Charm Packs, and the Ultimate Essence. This is all free, as long as you're focusing on uh, power or picking up one of your endgame ninjas. This is all free stuff that you're getting. You, you can ignore what random unit they're giving you that week. Um, it's not that important. I know some people are very picky about it. Like, they're like, oh, I'm going to wait till uh, they, they, they give me, like, Angel Conan in here. It's just like, let's be realistic, guys. They're not going to do that all the time. But by not doing your Fukumaru week and just pushing it back another month, you're delaying your own power gains or you're just um, making bad choices by not waiting for Fukumaru to uh, pick up stuff. Uh, this is especially true for free-to-play players. So, um, more or less, I'm going to summarize it. The advice to free-to-play players who are spending coupons. With Fukumaru, 
Do not worry about ninjas until you have established a foundation, which is your baseline. You will know when you established it when you start plateauing, and it's very obvious. Uh, I know some people might think they start plateauing at 80k. That is very hard to believe because if there's a system that you can still work on, you should be working on it into to the point where it's like impossible to push. Then that's when you are truly plateauing. And I really highly doubt you can plateau at 80k. Just putting that out there. So moving on to um, spending uh, with ingots. Uh, you still follow the same general guidelines. You wait for Fukumaru usually, but uh, as now you're recharging too, uh, and you know now that we're talking about cash, you have to be extra careful with where, where you spend. So make sure you don't recharge unless there's a recharge rebate, a good one, uh, not that slot machine. That slot machine is garbage. Please do not recharge during that time. Um, re Recharge during a recharge rebate, or uh, the wheel, or the red envelopes. Those are three ideal ones to do it during. Even for the total recharge rebate, if you can't do the full thing, um, you know, and get the, the ninja, if you can even get like some frags of it, you can. It helps out. And you also have to understand that uh, n the ninjas are not always forever and ever locked behind a paywall. They'll eventually hit coupon status, or they'll show up in some other event eventually. So, just wait it out. So, it, it, so more or less, if you're like a low spender, you definitely want to wait for the total recharge to get the free stuff for recharging. Sometimes it's um, two events at once. It's not too often, but sometimes there is a total recharge rebate and like the wheel together, or it's like the total recharge rebate and the envelopes together. Uh, it's rare, but it does happen. So keep an eye out for those. Um, and then obviously when spending, you try your best not to spend unless there's a rebate. Because, like I said, you're spending now with uh, ingots, which uh, are they, they're technically equal value with coupons. But I argue that it's worth slightly more because there are certain things that you cannot buy with coupons that you can only buy with ingots. Um, so one of the few things I will definitely tell you if you do recharge, uh, you want the monthly pack. I'm not going to go into details of why you want the monthly pack, because it gives you a great return of investment. You put in uh, X amount of ingots, it gives you more than what you put back in, put in. Uh, same with the uh, Naruto Froggy, it shows up every month. You definitely want to invest into that Froggy. If you can, if you can't do the you know the highest tier one, do the lowest tier one. The lowest tier one gives you back coupons. The mid tier one sucked. Ignore those. Um, just do the top, uh, the highest and the lowest. The lowest gives you obviously a slower return of uh, coupons, and the highest one gives you more. But it gives you more coupons than you invested in gets into. So that's something to always look out for. Um, and then, you know, there's obviously the total spending rebate, the colorful balloons, uh, and Fukumaru obviously rolls into this too. And then there's that other one where it resets every day. Um, I'm just not, I think it was a daily spending limit or whatever. That one's pretty good too. Um, but the amounts are a little f high for my taste. I don't like spending too much, but yeah. Um, and then, uh, oh, sorry. I completely forgot. Um, so for total recharge rebates, I know some people like to recharge all at once. And right now, just because I have the events open, uh, I can use this as a great example. Uh, that Things that you shouldn't do. Because I know people have Itachi already. Edo Itachi. So that's something I don't agree with that you should be doing. You should just recharge this uh, over the course of six days. Because we have the oh where is it the seven days of welfare where you can get the five thousand until you get free stuff on top, so you have to spend wisely. You're spending money now. We're talking cash now. Spend it wisely. Um, I know some people who have excess cash and they don't really care, but still at the same time you want to spend wisely. You want to get the most bang for your buck, um, and this is probably the best way to do it. Um, another thing that I'm just gonna quickly point out. Uh, for people who are spending, um, sometimes, you know, you're off by, like, a few 
ingots for Fukumarus or a spending rebate, you should pick up these, these space time tokens. They cost 10 ingots, uh, you can buy 10 of them a day, so that's 100. 100 ingots, and they turn into 20 coupons. So, it's a, it's it's more or less a way to, uh, it's an exchange rate, it's an exchange of currency. It's not bad, I, only, I use it whenever I need to like meet a certain rebate. So, yeah, that's more or less um, what I wanted to talk about. Um, so, t more or less, you have to first understand where you fall on the spectrum. Are you still working on establishing your baseline, or have you already hit that power plateau? If you hit that power plateau already, this is where you have to do some homework and figure out what is still worth your time to pick up and what isn't. Um, and if you obviously don't spot anything or thing you spot, you know, because every event has some type of power item in it, but sometimes the item is just not worth your time. You can always not pick it up. You're not bound by needing to pick it up. Just piece together a ninja. Look forward for uh, look forward to your end game units. Don't go around picking up every random thing. Uh, I do that just because I can, uh, but I don't suggest everyone do that. Uh, look for end game units that are going to stick around for a good while. It's, it's a best way to invest, especially if you're not a big spender. Alright, and that's it for this time. Um, yeah, till next time, have fun!